Thank you for joining Stretch and Flow with Rashi. We hope you enjoy this class. Don't forget to subscribe. Hi there, it's Rashi from Stretch and Flow here. I'm at the farm studio today and I'm going to do about a 30 minute or so flow for happy hips. So I get, as a teacher, I get asked a lot to um, do postures to open up the hips. And the hips, um, I love hips. Hips are a beautiful um, part of the body, but we can also store a lot of our emotional stress and a lot of our tension in our hips, which is why some of us experience that tightness in our hips. So when we're stressed and when we're anxious, if we don't deal with those emotions, the philosophy is, is that we start to store it in our tissues and hips is one of the major ones where we can store emotional tension, stress, and anxiety. So when that happens, that psoas muscle, for those of you familiar with anatomy, can get constricted and can get a bit tight. And by that constriction, it can also give us issues with our back as well. And if that psoas muscle becomes constricted, it, it can um, give us issues in our lower back. It can affect our mobility and our walking and our sitting. So today in the series of postures that I'm going to lead you through, we're just going to, it's almost like we're just going to lubricate that um, beautiful hip joint, the psoas muscle, and just loosen everything as we move through the postures. So as always, please go according to your body, what you need at this particular time. And especially if your hips are feeling really tight, perhaps just go about 60% into the stretch first and then if you feel too deep and into the stretch, then allow the body to do that with your breath. So let's just start by grounding with just using our breath to help us ground. You can stay in a seated posture like I am, so I've got my legs crossed, so a slight engagement of those hip muscles. Feel free to shut the eyes down or just take that little gaze in front of you. And let's just come into our breath. Sit up nice and tall. Soften through the shoulders, soften through the facial features. Let's just do about five to 10 rounds of breath. Just simply noticing we're not trying to lengthen or shorten the breath. Just your natural breath cycle, you might find that it naturally just lengthens the quieter you become within mind and body. And as we practice today, perhaps as we release some of that tension in the hips, start to be curious about your own self-confidence in this world. When you feel confident in certain situations, how does that make you feel in the physical? So how do you carry your body? How does that make you feel within your mind? Absorb the goodness of that and then be curious about when you're not feeling so confident, how that can portray in your body and your mind. A deep inhale through the nose, a big letting go sigh out the mouth. Do a couple more like that. Know that self-confidence is one of the most attractive qualities a person can have. And it starts with that word self. Inhaling. Exhaling. Let's just do one more together. Breathing in, letting the breath go. Take a gentle stretch of the body by bringing the arms up, perhaps adding a gentle back bend, and then a twist. So let's keep the twist open. Twist to the right, so the left arm's in front, the right arm's behind. Let's lengthen first, and then take a gaze over the right shoulder on the exhale. Inhaling to lengthen. Exhaling to twist. Everything comes back round to centre. Make a prayer with the palms and then reach up, perhaps adding a gentle back bend here. And as you exhale, take the twist to the other side. So to the left, the right arm's in front, the left arm behind. You're inhaling. 
inhale and to lengthen first. As you exhale, turn and twist over the left shoulder. One more breath. Everything comes back round to centre. And then make your way onto all fours position, so hands and knees. Knees are roughly hip width distance, palms are shoulder width distance. Drop the gaze down. Just take a gentle rock of the hip first. Be curious how they're feeling as you lean from one side. Come back through centre and then lean to the other side. Perhaps just do a couple more like that. Know that your confidence breeds strength. Be humble in your confidence, yet be courageous in your character. Believe that you are enough. Coming back to a neutral spine, let's take some cat-cow curls here. On the breath in, the waist goes back and the gaze goes up. On the breath out, rounding and arching. Let's do a couple more. Inhaling in. And exhaling in. One more. Breathing in and breathing out. Coming back to a neutral spine, soften through the shoulders, perhaps even micro bend the elbows. So flex as you can, keeping equal weight in the palms. Inhale that right leg behind you, take a big breath in, push out through the sole of the right foot first. Engage the core a little to steady the hip. Bend to the right knee and let's stack it over the left hip. So this is where it's really important to keep that equal weight in the palm. So we're not tipping the body over, we're just opening the hip. Rotate the ankle one way and then the other way. One more breath. The right leg comes back behind you. Take a breath in. As you breathe out, just drop everything to the mat. Take a cat cow curl here, inhaling and exhaling. And then coming back to a neutral spine, this time that left leg extends behind you. Again, keeping that equal weight in the palm, steadying the hip by floating the belly button to the spine to engage the core. And then bending the left knee as you stack it over the right hip. Again, just the hip, not the whole body. You can rotate the ankle one way and then the other way. Notice your breath here. One more breath. Inhale, that left leg shoots back behind you. As you exhale, drop it back down onto the mat. Come onto the finger mounds, creep them to the edges of the mat and drop into puppy pose. So really pushing the hip up towards the ceiling. The chest towards the mat, drop the gaze down and just creep the finger mounds a little bit further. Keep pressing the chest down, the hips up to the ceiling. One more breath here. And then gently walking the hands back so you're on all fours. And then bring the knees a little bit wider and then drop the sit bones in between the legs. So for some of you this may not be possible, not just because of your flexibility, but because of your body structure. If this feels uncomfortable for you, place a block underneath the sit bones just to give yourself a bit of height. So you're either sitting on your mat or I'm showing the modification where you're sitting on a block. We'll just open the hips up a little bit more. Try and neutralise the spine. Place the hands on the thighs. And just take some deep inhales in through the nose. Long exhales out. Know that what you think of yourself is much more important than what people think of you. Confidence breeds that strength. On the breath in, the arms reach all the way up. On the breath out, place the left hand on the right knee. The right hand comes behind. We're lengthening first and engaging over the right shoulder. Inhale to lengthen, exhale to twist. Bring the body back round to the front of the mat. Inhale the arms up, add that gentle back bend here. And then let's take a twist on the other side, right hand on left side, 
left hand comes behind your lengthening first and engaging over that left shoulder. One more breath here. Everything comes back round to centre. And if you want to, you can start to lean the body back. So if you have a little pull in the hip joint, you can stay on your palms and lean back. Some of you may have the range to come all the way down. So you can either stay like this, opening the heart up. If you have the range to come all the way down, make sure you're at the top of the mat. I'll just quickly show you. And then you can walk the body down. Some of you may just want to come down onto your elbows. That might be enough. Tuck the chin in towards the chest to protect the neck. And some of you may have range to come all the way down on your mat. The arms can just come out to the side. You're inhaling and you're exhaling. And whichever posture you're taking, just take a few breaths here. You'll feel a little pull in those hip flexors and the tops of the legs. Keep the breath flowing, inhaling and exhaling. One more breath, whether you're lying down or in a more upright posture. If you're lying down, just come up safely. Grab hold of the soles of the feet. Tuck the chin into the chest to protect your neck. Start to use your core to come up using your elbows. And then push yourself up, hug the inner thighs together. Walk the hands in front of you, lift the hips up. Scoop the knees back together so you're on all fours. Let's take one cat cow curl once you're in position. Breathing in. And breathing out. Back to a neutral spine. Inhale, the right leg comes behind you. Take a breath in. As you breathe out, just tap the right knee to the right elbow. Inhale, the right leg shoots back. As you exhale, take a cross. Right knee to left elbow. Engage the core a little. Inhale, the right leg shoots back. As you exhale, swing that right foot to the outer edge of the right palm. Scoop the left knee back. So that leg's a little straighter. And then just imagine your right knee has a crayon and you're just making little circles with that right knee, just exploring the hip, like you're just gently opening up, lubricating that hip joint, giving it a gentle massage. Notice any tightness there. You're breathing in and you're breathing out. You can either just stay here like this, doing this and this is enough for you. If you want to take it a little deeper, rock onto the side of that right foot. Use the right palm just to gently push the right thigh or the knee away. You can make those organic movements, either rocking backwards and forwards or making some circles with the knee. We're just opening the hip up a little bit more, leaning the body in the opposite direction perhaps to get a deeper stretch. Notice that breath. You're inhaling and you're exhaling. Know that people who repeatedly attack your confidence and self-esteem are quite aware of your potential, even if you're not. Have confidence in yourself. One more breath. And then releasing the right arm. Inhale, reach it up towards the ceiling. Take a big breath in. Push the right knee out to the side. If you want to take it further, you're reaching back with the right arm, flicking the left foot towards you and catching it, and then pulling it in towards you. If you can't quite reach, you can just make the action. If you have hold of the foot, pull it in towards you, feel the stretch down the other leg. You're inhaling and you're exhaling. One more breath. And then gently release the foot if you have it. The right arm reaches up again. Take a big breath in. As you breathe out, land the hand back down on the mat. And then let's set up for pigeon pose. So scooting the foot over to the left side of the mat. Dropping the knee across. Lengthening the back leg down. Come onto your finger mounds. So take a breath in. Lengthen through the crown of the head. 
As you breathe out, come halfway down and gaze over that right shoulder. You feel it pulling the glute and the hip. Inhale to push yourself back up. As you exhale, over to the other side. Inhale, push yourself all the way back up. Take a little back bend. As you exhale, coming all the way down. So you can either drop the head down onto the mat. Make a little cushion with your fist. Or if you need a little bit of height, use a block. And then just let the body rest here. So with this pose, make sure there's no gripping. If you feel like you're getting pushed out of the pose, so the body's leaning over, you can place the block under the right hip. And if this version isn't suitable for you, you come onto your back and you place the right ankle over the left knee. I'll show the modification in a moment. If you're in forward folding pigeon, just relax in this pose and let the breath do the work. And if this version doesn't suit you, you come onto your back, you place the right ankle over the left knee, hug the left thigh towards you, make sure you're pushing out through both soles of the feet and you still get that stretch down the right hip. So whichever version you're taking, just relax the body into that pose. Soften any tension in the shoulders. Make sure that your head is resting on something, whether that be the mat, your palms, or a block. And let's just hang out here for a few breaths. Make that confidence is something you can create within yourself by believing who you are. Two more breaths here. Just releasing the hip muscles, slowing down the breath. One more breath. And very gently start to creep the body back up if you're in forward folding virtual pigeon. If you're on your back, you can meet us in the next pose. So coming onto the ball of the back foot, lifting the leg up, take a big breath in, let the breath go. The right knee comes up to meet you. As you exhale, drop the right knee down to the edge of the right side of the mat. The left knee comes to the left edge of the mat. Bring the two big toes together. Take a moment in child pose. Just feel that stretch throughout the body. Drop the head down. Creep the fingertips to the front of the mat and push the hips to the back of the mat. So we're still getting a stretch of the hips in this pose. It's just a more grounded pose. Take two rounds of breath here. Inhaling and exhaling. Another breath in, let the breath go. And then press the palms into the mat. If you gently lift the hips up, scooting the knees back, coming back onto all fours, make any adjustments that you need to take. Let's take another cat cow curl here. Inhaling in and exhaling out. Back to a neutral spine. This time that left leg extends behind you. Take a big breath in. As you breathe out, tap left knee to left elbow. Inhale, the left leg shoots back. As you exhale, take the cross round the back, engage the core, left knee to right elbow. Inhale, the leg shoots back. As you exhale, you're swinging it to the left edge of the mat, scooting the right leg back a little, so straightening the leg. And imagine that left knee is a crayon, just making circles. Again, just gently opening up this side of the body. Noticing how it feels. Keeping that breath nice and fluid. Know that confidence is the ability to feel beautiful without needing someone to tell you that you are. Inhale confidence. Exhale down. One more breath here. And again, you can either stay just doing these little movements if this feels comfortable in your body, or you can rock onto the left side of the foot. Keep the right.
right hand grounded and bring the left palm to that left knee or thigh as you gently push it away from you, leaning the body in the opposite direction, just opening the hip a little bit more, deepening into the stretch. The gaze can be down low or up a little higher if you're wanting a neck stretch. Just be curious, play around what feels good for your body. Soften the facial features and just opening up the hip. Nothing should be intention. You're breathing in and you're breathing out. One more breath here. Then releasing that left arm, reach up nice and tall. The gaze can follow. Again, you can stay here or you can go a bit deeper into the stretch. The left arm comes behind you, the right foot flicks up. You're either just making the action or you're catching hold of the foot and pulling it towards you. Just deepening the stretch a little bit more. Keep the breath flowing, inhaling and exhaling. One more breath. And then gently just releasing that foot down. Inhale, the left arm reaches up again. As you exhale, let it land back on the mat as we set up for pigeon on the other side. So scooting the foot over to the right, pigeon toe in the over, dropping the knee across, lengthening that back leg down, coming onto the finger mound first. Take a breath in, lengthen through the crown of the head. As you breathe out, just coming halfway down, gazing over the left shoulder. Inhale to push yourself up. As you exhale, coming halfway down, getting that foot in the left hip as you gaze over the right shoulder. Inhale, this time create length, but add a gentle back bend, weight is so fat. And as you exhale, come down into full pigeon, either resting on that block again, coming down all the way to the mat, making a little cushion. Bring your arms out in front if you want to rest your head down. And if this version of pigeon doesn't suit you, you flip onto your back and bring the left ankle over the right knee, hug the right thigh towards you, and make sure you're pushing out through both soles of the feet. So whichever posture you've taken, just bring stillness into the posture. Widen through the collarbone. And just allow again the breath to do the work. If you feel like you're getting kicked out of the pose, you can place the block under that left hip flexor, just to realign you. And let's take a few breaths here. Know that confidence is like a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it gets. And if you believe you can, then you're halfway there already. a few more breaths here. And then gently just starting to lift the body up. Lengthening through the spine, coming on the ball of the right foot, lifting the leg up, pushing out through the sole of the foot first. The left knee comes to meet you on your breath in. As you breathe out, just dropping it down, bringing the right knee to follow, coming back onto all fours again. Taking a cat cow curl once everything's landed, inhaling in and exhaling out. Back to a neutral spine. This time the right leg extends behind you. Take a breath in. As you breathe out, land it all the way through. So get stable in the feet. You can scoot that left knee back a little if you want a deeper hip stretch. Ground down through the feet. Hug the inner thighs together. Focus your gaze on one spot. And then bringing the arms overhead, making that pistol grip. And then we're really sinking into the hip. So really lunging with that right knee, feel that left hip open. We're just creating length. You can add a gentle back bend here if you like. Keep the breath flowing. We're just holding this pose for a count of five, four, really sinking into the hip. Three, 
two, pulling the arms over the head, one, inhale, lengthen, as you exhale, place the hands either side of the foot, walk the hands over to the left edge as you should scoop that right knee back, bring the hands back into front of you, you're back on all fours, take a cat cow curl here, inhaling in, and exhaling out. Back to a neutral spine, this time that left leg extends behind you, take a big breath in. As you breathe out, bringing it in between your palms, using your hands to help you. This time the right knee can scoot back a little bit to get into the hip. Then stay with the first, so hug the inner thighs together, press them firmly to the mat with the feet. Focus your gaze and then let's bring the arms up, making that pistol grip. And then sinking down into the hip, feeling them open a little bit more. Bring the arms overhead, creating the back bend, perhaps feeling an extra pull in the hip. You're inhaling and you're exhaling. Let's hold this again, really sink into those hips for five, four, three, two, one, inhale, reach up, create length. As you exhale, come down and frame the front foot. This time walking the hands over to the right edge, scooting the left knee back, bringing the hands in front of you, crossing the ankles over, coming into a seated posture, or bringing the ankles out to the side. So just get settled in your sit bone. Just bring my notes so I keep to track. Sitting up nice and tall, take a breath in, let the breath go. And then keeping the legs crossed as I am, but bringing that right foot over to the left thigh. So it's like a half lotus. So the right foot comes over to the left thigh. And for some of you, You'll notice a difference when we do both sides. I know for me, I'm more flexible in one side than the other. For some of you, if this is uncomfortable, you can place a block or a cushion or a pillow to give it a more gentler landing on that right knee if it's pulling. For me, it's not pulling it quite all right like that. But if you feel like you need something there as a support, a bolster or a block, and then lengthen through the spine, take a breath in, let the breath go. Inhale, the arms reach up. And as you exhale, you're just creeping them forward to your degree. You feel that little pull in the hip flexors here, a little stretch in the spine. Come down to your degree. So some of you might be up here, some of you may be a little lower, you might have the range to come down onto your forearm and drop the head right down. It doesn't really matter where you are, as long as you're feeling a stretch. If you want to lie over a bolster, you can make it into a more restorative pose. So just spending a few breaths here, inhaling, exhaling, another breath in, let the breath go. And then engaging the core as you just start to walk the hands back up, releasing that right foot, bring the soles of the feet together, the knees are pushing out to the side, interlace the fingertips and cradle the toes. On the breath in, create length, pull the toes up towards you. On the breath out, keep pushing the knees out to the side as you just start to fold over the toes. Keep pulling the toes towards you, feeling the hips open, soften the back of the neck. With each inhale, that subtle lengthening. With each exhale, coming down a little bit more. Know that confidence is not thinking you're better than everyone else. It's not having to compare yourself in the first place. One more breath. And then gently start to bring the body back up. And let's come into half lotus on the other side. So this time the left, foot comes over that right thigh. 
Again, if you need a little bit of cushioning or a prop underneath that left knee, go ahead. Inhale, the arms reach up. As you exhale, folding forward again to your degree. Make it more restorative if you want by adding a little bolster in front of you or a cushion. Again, coming down to your degree, feeling the hip pull a little, feeling that stretch down the left side, dropping the gaze down. You can rest your head on a block if that's more nourishing for you as you come down. what feels great for your body. Have the confidence to know that you know what's the best for your practice. All I offer is just a guide. Taking another breath in, letting the breath go. One more and then gently just start to walk the hands back up, uncrossing the legs perhaps rock from side to side, find that sweet spot. Take a breath in, as you breathe out, just take a gentle twist, left hand on right knee, right hand behind, gazing over the right shoulder, inhaling to lengthen, exhaling to twist. Everything comes back to centre, inhaling in. As you exhale, take the twist on the other side, right hand on left knee, left hand behind, Lengthening first on the inhale, twisting on the exhale. Bring everything back round to centre. If you want to finish your practice lying down, go ahead. Otherwise, come into a seated posture or on your knees or legs out in front. Something that's comfortable as we just come into a little bit of breath work before we finish. So sitting up nice and tall or lying down, whatever posture is good for you. Shut the eyes down a little or take a gaze in front of you. And as we started the practice, just coming into your breath cycle, you might find that it's lengthened, perhaps be curious how it feels compared to the start of your practice. Try not to let the mind drift. Sit up nice and tall, but let there be a softness in your body. As you just continue to breathe, be confident. Too many days are wasted comparing ourselves to others and wishing to be something that we aren't. Everybody has their own strengths. Everybody has their own weaknesses. And it's only when you accept everything you are and everything you aren't that you will truly succeed. Take another breath in. Let the breath go. On the inhale, reaching the arms up if you're seated. If you're lying down, you can just stay where you are. As you exhale, bring the hands to your heart space or place them over your heart if you're lying down. And as we finish, wouldn't it be powerful if you fell in love with yourself so deeply that you had the confidence to do just about anything if you knew it would make you happy? This is precisely how much life loves you and wants you to nurture yourself. The more confidence you have in yourself, the deeper you can love yourself. The more worth will be affirmed. The more your worth will be affirmed. Then you can enjoy a lifelong love affair that brings you the richest fulfillment from the inside out. Namaste. Please subscribe to our channel, Alex and Rashi, and there's more content coming. And um, I hope your hips are feeling nourished and stretched. Um, make sure you keep hydrated, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for joining us for Stretch and Flow with Rashi. We hope you've enjoyed the class. Please subscribe, and make sure if you have any questions, please send an email, get in touch some way. Once again, thank you, and have a great day.